So you want to put 22.5 commercial grade tires on your 2019 or newer Dodge Dooley Cummins. So you don't look like a big old buff guy that forgot leg day. Those stock tires are ridiculous. Yeah, I don't know who would put those. Here's everything you need to know to get the conversion done. Here's all the problems I ran into. And what you can do differently if you don't like my setup. Yours for life And tell your friend she's next in love The adapters I went with are the 8 on 200 Which, if you didn't know, is Dodge as of 2019 on their Dooley's only, 2019 and newer, changed their lug pattern. A lot of people seem to not know this. I didn't when I bought it. They changed it to eight on 200. So it's now the same as Ford and Chevy on their 3500 Dooley's. It's eight on 200, it's no longer eight on 6.5. Although, if you take the Dooley adapters off the front, you will find that it is still eight on 6.5 on the front axle, but the back axle still has eight on 200. So with the adapters up front, it makes it eight on 200 and the rear eight on 200. So if you wanna run some deep dish rims up front or do the super singles up front, you gotta get eight on 6.5 up front and eight on 200 in the rear for the adapters, which is gonna be kind of a headache. So the adapters are eight on 200, by 10 on 285.75, which is the semi-truck 10 lug lug pattern. They're gonna run inch and a half thick is the one I went with. You can get them in steel or cast iron. They're only gonna be about one inch thick. And by thick, I mean how much offset you're gonna get adding a spacer. I went with the inch and a half aluminum ones because they were much lighter. And they were billet aluminum, which means they're still going to hold their strength. A lot of people don't like aluminum, and I wouldn't if it was cast, but these were made in California at a machine shop. So I trust the inch and a half aluminum because, I mean, the rims are aluminum. If you don't trust aluminum, you shouldn't trust your rims. They were not cheap. The adapters were $375 a piece, which makes it $1,500 for all four. But... On the plus side, these came with all the hardware needed to mount it. They came with the lug nuts for the 10 lug and the acorn nuts that you have to switch over to to run these adapters. So it came with all the hardware needed. You might find wheel adapters for cheap, but make sure you read the fine print and see if it comes with the lug nuts needed because the semi-truck lug nuts are about $250 a piece and the acorn lug nuts are about $1.50 a piece. So you will be spending more money on those if they don't come with your kit. I do recommend going American made when it comes to wheel adapters or wheel spacers of any sort. The company I went with is out of California. I called them. I asked them if it's gonna work on my truck. They said they don't know. They just know they make the wheel adapters. So I crossed my fingers. They told me my 2019 should have eight on 200. I verified online. Sure enough, it does. That's when I found out that 2019 and newers switched over to eight on 200, Dooley's only. If you have a fender flare, it might be sucked under just a little bit. So you might want to run the two inch thick spacers up front if you want to get that flush or in, my, in this case, more, more of aggressive. I, hindsight, probably would have gone with the two inch thick up front and then the inch and a half in the rear because the rear actually do stick out a pretty good bit. I had to offset my mud flaps a little bit so that it would actually cover the entire tire. So the police here in good old Utah will give me a hard time. They probably still will, but we'll see. The stock rims are hub centric, just like these are. Semi truck wheels, for the most part, are hub centric. You do not have to get notched out rims. If you had a 10 lug, 4,500 or 5,500, you would have to get notched out rims or you have to get a two inch thick spacer and sometimes have to modify the lug nuts. You have to cut the heads off of the studs so that they will bolt down. Otherwise you have to notch out the inside area 
around the hub so that your lug nuts can feed through the hub. Let's talk about the rims. Alcoa 22.5s. I'm not going with anything else. Pretty happy with them. Your specs on Alcoas are going to be 22.5 by 8.25 wide by 10 lug, 285.75 bolt pattern, two, 220 hub bore center, 45 pound rim, 7,400 pound rating at 130 PSI. The valve stem is going to be a TR554D. They're all steel. You don't get any rubber valve stems with semi trucks because they don't need any kind of failure. You got a couple different options when it comes to Alcoas. You can buy them used, which is what I bought mine. I bought mine used. They came with tires already on them. They were a good deal, so I bought them. Tires. If you are buying rims, if you are buying used rims and paying more than 160 a piece for them, and they're not polished, you're losing your money. You're, you're just wasting it. Because any good polisher is going to charge you, if they're not in the best condition, at least $100 a rim to get them polished. You're paying $160 a rim plus $100 for a polish, you might as well have just bought Alcoa Level 1s. Because they are already got a perfect finish on them. Well, near perfect finish. So they're only Level 1s, they're not the mirror finish Alcoas. They're Durabrite Evo technology which is going to be what your OEM rims are going to come coated with so that you don't have to maintain them. It's going to come with a polished rim, but then they put a coating over it, which is going to make it not as shiny, but pretty darn close to the same grade you're going to get from any other Alcoa. But you're not going to have to polish them. You're going to be able to just use soap and a rag and wash them and not have to worry about getting them shined up every six months or a year. They also have Dura Black, Alcoa just came out with. So they come coated already with a black, it's kind of like a powder coat, but much stronger. I think it looks pretty good, but I really didn't want to murder this truck out and go all black. It's already got a few chrome accents, so I went with just uh, polished aluminum. If I did it again, I would go with the Dura Bright. The Dura Bright, maintenance free. I mean, I've already put one polish on these, and they were almost as shiny as this chrome, but they've dulled a little bit. They were used, and they were pretty beat up. I mean, they probably had at least 500,000 miles. They were used on a semi-truck, so the polisher did the best he could, but I would probably get them brand new. What kind of lug nut caps can you get? I went with the spikes. I think they look freaking gnarly. People think they're actually metal spikes. I mean, it'd be pretty freaking cool if they were, if they were like a chromed out or a stainless, but they would be like $5,000 if they were stainless spikes. So, what they are is just your ABC plastic. I mean, there's nothing too fancy about them. Bought them off Amazon. You can get two fronts and four rears because they're for a semi truck, so they expect you have two axles. For 250 to, no. When I was looking, it was about $150 to $200. I went with the $200 ones because all the one reviews on the 150 ones were just horrible. They said the chrome peeled off, the plastic would melt in the sun, just a bunch of garbage. So opt out, get you something with the name brand on it. You can get the flat caps, you can get the semi round caps. There's there's plenty of caps you can get for them. You can get the chrome caps, the metal ones that just clip over the lug nuts, but those ones seem to fall off. I personally think these ones look freaking nasty. I mean, I see semi trucks on the road now without hubcaps, and I'm like, why would you not put hubcaps? I feel it's just so much better. What size tires are we going with? We got the 255-70R, 22.5, 18-ply. These are some heavy duty freaking tires. If you're blowing out an 18 ply, you're doing something crazy in a 3500, which is one reason I opted out for going for commercial grade tires, because I was tired of putting mud tires on my truck every 20,000 miles with a 20 inch rim or a 24 inch rim. Tires are expensive and 
just regular grade 14 plies aren't rated for heavy commercial use. And I pull a lot of weight and I put a lot of miles on my trucks. 255.70 is going to be your smallest tire. They measure out from bottom to top right at 37 inches. Like when it tells you it's a 255.70, they, they, don't, they don't play around. Like they get right to the specs. You buy a 37 inch mud tire, you might be off by a whole inch once you inflate them. These ones came out to exactly 37 inches from bottom to top. And yes, your stock Dodge nose diving will fit these and turn just fine. I've seen some hot shotters doing it. They're putting these tires on, except for they're not going aggressive. They're usually putting the steer tires up front, which are your straight groove. And then they're putting drive tires in the rear, kind of like these maybe a little less aggressive and they are turning and driving just fine. Obviously, if you lift a truck, you're going to lose a little bit of fuel economy because you get a little less aerodynamics. So the hot shutters don't usually do that, but these will turn because they're only 37 inch by 1050. Uh, if that, I think they're like just under 10, I think like 10 and three eighths wide. Now you get a skinny tire, you can turn a 37 all day. Now if these were 1250 or 1350, yeah, you might be scrubbing a little on the inner or outer. But these came out to be just perfect. So you can go with the 275, 70, 22.5, which is gonna be a little wider and a little taller. But that comes out to about a 39 inch tire, which is gonna be yeah, I think you could probably get away with it with a four and a half inch lift like this truck has. But you might have to trim your fender, trim your front balance a little bit. Not 100% sure. And the next truck I do, I might try it. Stay tuned. Just because I want my tires a little wider than these are, they still work. But one of the downfalls is you are going to have a big gap in your rear tire. That's the only thing I don't like to look. But we fix that look by staying legal, throwing some big old mud flaps on there. They drop down to below the halfway point, came until there's a gap in between them. Balancing. How are people balancing these tires? So a lot of people just say throw one of those sandbags in the tires or the balancing beads. I am 100% against balancing beads. Every truck I've done with balancing beads the balancing beads either come apart, they powderize, they ball up, somehow moisture gets in there and they get stuck in one side. I've just had nothing but problems with balancing beads. Plus, it just corrodes the shit out of aluminum rims. You might have had good experience, I haven't, so I'll never put balancing beads in my tires. Now, what you can do is you can go with wheel weights. You just stick them on the inside there my back on the inside you can stick on the fat face the back tire you're gonna have to just get away with not balancing your outside one if you want to put wheel weights I've I think you put clip on style but that would just ruin the look of it so what most people are doing it's gonna be a little more expensive but they're called centromatic balancing rings and they basically act like a plate that bolts up behind the rim. I'll put a picture up. So they're gonna bolt up behind the rim and it's gonna be a ring filled with uh, oily oil or some kind of fluid that doesn't freeze. And they're gonna have little metal stainless steel balls in it. And they're gonna act like balancing beads except for it's not inside the rubber tire. It's inside a perfectly round stainless steel ring and there's a few YouTube videos of them on little test tires and putting a bunch of weights on one side. They turn it on way out of balance and they put a little mini balancing ring on, fixes it right up. I mean, it balances out perfectly. So that's what I'm gonna do if I ever had an imbalance. I decide to say, let's go without that for now. Let's just see what happens. I threw these on, I can go 85 down the road. I have absolutely zero road force. These tires, the tolerances are held way tighter on commercial grade tires. I can go 85 down the freeway with these and I'm getting no bounce out of them at all. 
And once I go about 90, I start getting a little jump in the rear end. So you get centromatic balancing rings, which on the rears, they literally is just a flat plate with a stainless steel ring that rides right in between your tires. So that space in there, it just puts a little stainless steel ring with your balancing beads. And then the front just sits right behind your tire, right in there. Can't even see them. Some kind, there are some that you can see. I would just paint mine black and then you wouldn't be able to see them. But they work pretty good. All right, a couple pros and cons. The only cons and complaints I have would be probably the big gap in the rear. That's why on the next ones I want to go with the 275 70 instead of the 255 70. That way the tire section width is a little wider. They're going to be bigger tires, but I think you'll still clear them. I do not like how big the gap is. These tires, being an open tread pattern like this, are going to pick up rocks. They're going to pick up a lot of rocks. I think my back tire still has a few stuck in it. If you're hitting a lot of dirt roads, you're going to be picking up rocks. You're going to hop on the freeway and you're going to be throwing those rocks. You better have some mud flaps or people behind you are going to be pissed off throwing big ass rocks at their truck or their car. This is going to be going through their windshield. So definitely recommend having mud flaps if you get an open tread pattern like this. Or you will chip up your body, chip up your paint. Because it will throw rocks. Now if you get the steer tires up front, or straight cut, straight groove, you might pick up a few. But it's going to be significantly less than these pick up. So only cons I can say is I wish they were a little wider. Don't like that gap in the rear and they will throw a couple couple boulders. I've noticed as uh, they've gotten older and they're not as clean and new, squeaky, sticky rubber, less rocks have been sticking into the grooves because I live on a dirt road. So I'm getting a lot less, a lot less rocks stuck in my tread. They still do, as you can see in my tread. Every now I'll walk around my pocket knife and pick them out, but they really don't bug me. So I guess the question is, are these tires for you? I don't know, that's for you to decide. I recommend them 100% over going with a 20 inch American Force in some uh, Toyo open countries, even Toyo mountain countries, mountain terrains, whatever they're called. You're gonna wear those suckers out in 20,000 miles and be buying brand new tires at the same price you're gonna buy these. These are, I think, $350, $400 a tire. You're spending the same price for 37-inch, 20-inch rim mud tires of any other brand. Obviously, these can climb up to eight, dollars $900 if you're buying, like, some Toyos, if you're buying Continentals or some name-brand commercial tire. But you're getting also a lot more security with them. But the way I see it, I went with these, uh, what are they? Saloon. Saloon style S753s. And uh, I don't know if they're Chinese. They're probably Chinese. But you put a lower quality tire that's rated for a truck three times the size of this. I'm going to trust that over any 14 ply all day. And I haven't had a single issue out of these. Another pro is going to be if you do get a flat, guess who's gonna have semi-truck tires in stock all the time? Every pilot, every Flying J, any truck stop, any mobile trucker mechanic, because semi-trucks get a blowout, they gotta be back on the road. So most places are gonna have these in stock. You have a 37-inch 1250 mud tire, you blow a tire out 10 o'clock at night, driving to the sand dunes, you're gonna call up every shop in town. They're all closed for the weekend. You can't get a Les Schwab to come out or big O tires with a new mud tire. So you're gonna have to throw a dinky little spare on or whatever you got on hand. With these, you call up any mobile truck mechanic. They're gonna say, yeah, what size tire you got? You tell them you got a 22.5, they're gonna be like, what you got? They're gonna show up. They're gonna slap a new tire on right there on the side of the road because these are actually surprisingly really easy to change yourself. Well, at least compared to smaller rims. So should you put these on your truck? That's for you to decide. You wanna have a bitchin' ride like this? 
or you want to have a little dinky tires. I don't know. This whole setup, you're looking at about uh, four, about four thousand dollars. I have total in this. Now, if you were to buy everything brand new, for the low end on the rims, you'd be paying about three hundred dollars a rim, about three fifty a tire, fifteen hundred for adapters. You buy some American Forces, I mean, you're looking at easy ten thousand dollars in just rims for a dually for 22s or 24s and then you got mud tires on top of that any low profile mud tires can be stupid expensive you're looking at four or five hundred dollars a tire there it's i don't know this was a no-brainer for me i get better wear characteristics i'm gonna get more miles per gallon with these tires and they're gonna last longer and i have peace of mind knowing that i have a tire rated for three times as much as what I'm gonna be pulling. So, in the end, it's your decision. This is the route I chose, and I think it looks freaking sweet, dude.